is always fun when someone comes to the window. <laughs> Sometimes we think of the space like a sophisticated kindergarten. <laughs> The lofted room. I don't know how it got called the treehouse to begin with. It would be amazing if we actually could live in a beautiful plot of land in the countryside with a couple of small houses and a yard where we did work. The plants, you relate that to tending a garden or having a lawn. Right now we want to be in New York and oddly this is some way of having that yeah. kind of life without having to buy land. I'd been living in Harlem when I was going to grad school at Columbia and then I actually took a job in an architecture office in Europe for a little while and I kind of always imagined that I would kind of move back to Brooklyn. I, I really wanted a kind of warehouse space basically that was pretty open and being trained in architecture it was also an opportunity to do something interesting with the space. It's the kind of thing that you always wanted to be this romantic raw space and surprisingly it was difficult to find those kinds of buildings around and then when you do you realize you have to have a roommate or a few roommates to pay the rent. Even though the whole space was really open when I first moved in, it was apparent from the beginning that it was going to have to get divided up. I used to live in this room. So this is the cabin and we have this really simple closet, which is just a piece of driftwood tied with some rope. It's a cabin taken out of context. There is that thing that kind of transports you. Sometimes I feel like I might be at the ocean there's remnants of that peacefulness that has been created in here somehow. The thing I didn't want to do was build floor to ceiling walls, which defeats the whole purpose of having an open loft space. So the small spaces within a bigger space was kind of a way to address the need for some kind of privacy. So, you know, doing like a peaked roof with uh, structures that don't go all the way to the ceiling or smaller spaces that are just cozy enough to fit a bed and a little bit of space. It was a way to have bedrooms that were comfortable and private with just enough space for sleeping and storing some things and then the rest of the space was kept open and free. The floor is raised by about a foot. It was designed so that there were some panels underneath the floor that could be opened up and so there was storage underneath the floor. But then the step up also kind of makes the room feel like a, like a more private, separate space. For a long time, um, I had a mattress just on the floor. And, and I think having that difference between this floor outside and the floor inside, you know, you kind of treat it more like an ashram or like a tatami room. And then it almost becomes a piece of furniture in itself. And so things like the angles of the ceiling and the roof help to you know, get light through the whole space. The lofted room is also done in a way that you, you feel like some con continuity of space below the treehouse, which we call it the treehouse. It's not so uncommon to have lofted spaces in buildings like these, and a lot of our neighbors do. But I think the main difference is that there's walls that are built up, and then also the kind of split level so that you can actually walk up really easily without having to climb a ladder. And then when you're on the top, you can still, it feels like a room that you can still stand in. And then you kind of like crawl into the bed. You know, when you're laying down, you don't actually need all that head space, which in a normal bedroom, you know, would go all the way up. But at the same time, you have just enough space for sleeping up top, and it's really cozy, and it feels like a little nest. And the windows, because the structures are detached from the windows of the building, I wanted to put windows in the structures themselves. So usually we shutter them at night. There's a window here that can be open when the doors close. This big barn door. Yeah closes all the way also so that it kind of seals out light when you want to keep when you want to sleep in in the morning it helps a lot so the space under here gets turned into our closet this area is you know the bed is right up here and then this area is our study and our office 
So it still feels like you're kind of maximizing the space while keeping things pretty open. And it, you know, the design had gone through a lot of different permutations of, at one point, tiny rooms on wheels or things that were totally modular, things that were more immaterial, like curtain-based designs. And in the end, this was something that was simple enough to build and pretty cheap. The place was built with standard lumber, plywood, things that you can easily get at a hardware store. The materials, I think, in the end probably cost about $2,000. Then and over the course of the summer, it got built with the help of like, you know, 15 people of a lot of friends and neighbors. You know, plywood is cheap and it's easy to manipulate. And it was an easy material to cut. All you had was a circular saw. And then much of these walls were cut with a utility knife. So, you know, things are pretty rough cut, but I think a lot of it was a challenge of really learning how to do things myself. Being able to make things for yourself without having to rely on other people making them for you. Things as simple as cutting down a plywood sheet and putting edges on it makes it a table when it's on sawhorse. You know, like, you can make what you want rather than having to buy it. This window here is a cat window. I do think that there's an element of play that comes into this whole apartment and you know, a lot of it is about making space for yourself and making it how you want and not feeling tied to convention. I mean, in as much as things have to be functional, like the stairs have to work and everything has to be structurally sound, it was really a chance to play a bit. A larger idea behind this is helping to make a vision for another way things could be. It's a nice way to communicate in the morning when I'm still sleeping and Adam's making breakfast. <laughs> I'll poke my head out. Yeah. Did either of you have a treehouse? Uh, no, I always wanted one. I was obsessed with trying to build the best treehouse in the neighborhood. I had a bathroom in my treehouse. I guess it's an extension of your bedroom. So then, as an adult, to be able to live in a treehouse feels kind of liberating. When you see the types of houses sometimes that are available on the market, houses are way oversized for a lot of modern families, and people seem to have this like preconceived notion of what they think they want and what they think they need, when actually maybe it's inflated or maybe it's not actually that tailored to what they want. And so this, I don't know, whatever this way of living is, being open to really thinking about what is the essential thing that you need and then starting with that. The idea of smaller spaces within a bigger space, you can climate control the interior of a bigger space and then within that you can have smaller climates. You don't cool the whole apartment, you just have an AC unit in your bedroom. Normally you look at an 800 square foot apartment and it's divided up into a couple bedrooms with a kitchen. Everything has walls, and then there ends up not really being a big space. It's, for New York City, a pretty open apartment for its size. <laughs> so we're able to have really large dinner parties here and dance parties and art salons. The important thing, I guess, is that when we have friends stay here or guests stay here, it actually does feel like two kind of separate private spaces, even though you're in the same big open space. And so this might also just be a certain trend towards more open living spaces and things like that. Not that it's a trend, but it's actually functional for us. Mm -hmm.